we've all talked about it over many years um, in ones and twos. Um, I was working with Tony for a long while, so it was a subject of you know, great discussion over you know, <laughs> 10 years. Um, and then uh, a few years ago, Gary went over and saw Steve Norman. I obviously was with Tony. And then about two years ago, I got together with Gary uh, for the first time in probably 15 years. And we had a glass of wine. And, uh, Love beer. No, it was a glass of fine red wine. And, uh, and we tried to make a way that we, we could make this work. Um, I think you know, there was a desire from five people. And uh, you know, it took a little bit of negotiations, but uh, I think we were very glad that uh, we made the effort. I think at that meeting, uh, before the end of that meeting, which obviously was um, sensitive as well, we were already discussing the set list. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Getting excited. Yeah, we're daring to dream about it. You know, it, it seemed it seemed you know not an impossible task, but it was going to be a difficult task. But uh, actually, as it's turned out, once we'd uh, broken the ice, it all came together pretty quickly. It worked. It worked out really well because I think I think the way we went about it was right. We, we met in twos and threes uh, rather than all at once in the lawyers' room. You know, with the lawyers standing you know, there, which would have made it real, a lot of pressure on the whole meeting. We met in twos and threes with his friends, which was the right way to do. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we, we discovered, really discovered that friendship, sorted the business out, and uh, I think the first time it really became solid, the first time it became tangible was when we actually got into a personal studio and started playing music together. And uh, from that point, it was, it was very easy. After, after you know, twenty bars of playing music together, suddenly there was a magic in the room. And, we all, all immediately understood how you know what we could miss it and, and how important Spandau Ballet was and how, yeah. how, how much we could move it on and, and uh, write, write some new chapters in the Spandau Ballet story. There's also, there was that, that day in the rehearsal studio, there was a, a kind of a spirit that we evoked in the music and that became like another character in the room, another person. And, and I think all of us felt a sense of responsibility to, our, to that to that spirit and and to our legacy as well you know um, and that we had to make we had to make this work because you know we'd all played music with different people in different places over the last 20 years but we'd never been in a room and made that sound <coughs> for those years and it was just uh, I, think, uh, I think the yeah. first song that we put together we put our guitars on and the first song we started playing was our fight for you which uh, was just magical that was that was when it became very easy. Uh, you know, to say there was some delicate negotiations before to sort the business out. Um, but as soon as we started playing, it, it, it was it just felt right. Yeah, twenty years didn't exist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's years away. I an interview with the Christian Canal said, "As Ian said about this reunion, no nostalgia at all. So I'd like to know what for you, what your idea." It's all about the future. It's about Spanner Valley in 2009. Um, you know, nostalgia is, is looking back. We're, we're trying to look forward. In every way, you know, the, the band is, is better than we were 20 years ago. We're all better players, we're all better people. So, you know, we've all grown in many ways. So, and I think that was important about making the, the new album. It actually got the band back into a studio and uh, you know, put us on a, a better mm -hmm. footing. You know, the, the first plan was to go and do some concerts. You know, it's pretty much one year ago, pretty much now, where Spano Valley, the five of us, were in a room together for the first time. So in that year, we've uh, covered a lot of ground. You know, <coughs> yeah, we're going to go and do some shows, and then we got offered a fantastic deal by Universal. And uh, I think we were all, you know, I couldn't see how we were going to fit making a record in to this year. But um, Universal wanted us to uh, reappraise some of the old songs, and uh, that, that was perfect for us. And, uh, and out of that, also, we have two new tunes. So, uh, yeah. I think most of our songs uh, are timeless. You know, they, they don't only exist in context of an era. You know, they they work now just as well. And uh, so there there isn't a sense of nostalgia when we play it. You know, I think the songs are more powerful than that. They they they're like they're like Peter Pan, a great song, you know, it, 
it, it, it, it doesn't grow old, you know. So um, there's that to the music. Also, just to say that with the new album, that is a separate project. That is um, Spanar Bali in a very intimate setting, apart from the new songs. Uh, that's a very intimate look at, at these songs. Um, live on stage when we come here to do the shows. It's, it's electronic, it, it's big, it's, it's more like the originals but louder and pumped up. Big rock show. Timeless songs. <laughs> songs. Oh, yeah, 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 I mean, you know, the songs, I think over the 20 years, those songs have entered into the public consciousness, they're, they're part, of the, part of the culture, and uh, no matter what age you are, I mean, I, my daughter's at university now in, in Manchester, and you know, that gold gets played at the end of you know, 18, 19 year old clubs. So uh, it really has crossed a lot of generations. And so there's the people who saw us before, back in the day, and now we have a whole new audience as well. We saw, uh, we did a TV show in Germany last week, Battle Das, with, um, with Black Eyed Peas, and Fergie and Will I Am were talking to us because they did a cover of True two years ago. And they said they, they did it for a movie soundtrack but they were he was upset that he couldn't put it on uh, their album because they just missed the slot so Fergie used it on her uh, uh, there's a another track on the uh, on her single it's a nice cover. and yeah it's a nice cover you know and to those guys and Nelly uh, two or three years ago did used it you know it, it it's not a dated song still it's it's out there as John says in the public consciousness so so in a way we're all just based, talking about your idea of is this a nostalgia trip no it's not you know we're the only band who can play those songs, really. Well, I, th I think the plan for the band is just to, is to move forward into the future. You know, I think when you're in a band when you're a kid, and you start first start the band, uh, it's kind of it's all consuming. You know, that's all you know used to be in the band. That's your life. But uh, I think over the last 20 years, we have so much more life experience to bring into the band for the first time. Uh, and uh, I think that's the exciting thing about uh, starting again. We never thought we'd be doing this tour with uh, a new record, with, with a new, with a song, a, you know, a, a brand new song that we're playing on TV now. And that, that really has been a great thrill for us because it's, it's broken the ice as far as Spandau Ballet making music in the future. We know we can do it now. You know, the most nerve-wracking thing is to sit in a studio and show someone a song, you know, and, uh, and begin a new song. And we knew we had the responsibility of of, of Spandau Ballet's history, that this new song had to be worthy of all those other ones, you know. And when we started building that in the rehearsal studio and in the recording studio, you know, I think we were all a bit nervous, but it, it, it didn't take long before we felt, you know, this could be another Spandau classic. Yeah, and it was good, you know, in the time pressures of making the record, we say we had really had to fit it into six weeks in the summer, which, you know, it's it a short amount of time to make an album. But I think that pressure was good because I think we all had to be very instinctive about it and we didn't have too much time to question ourselves. <coughs> you know, um, and so it, it, it came pretty naturally. I mean, we, we, we recorded in a residential studio outside London, so we were living together, eating together, playing together, and drinking together. So, uh, yeah, it, it, was, it was very good to bring everyone. It's together. true because after 20 years, our musical differences were yeah. zero when we got back in. That's exactly, it, yeah. yeah. But so it's also, you know, being in a residential really good bonding experience for us as, as friends because it brought us together. I mean, if you imagine recording in any studio, sometimes by the time you travel backwards and forwards to a local studio, you don't even see each other. You know, you, you're you do the bass at a different time, the drums at a different time. You never get to, to sit down and talk. So being together where we, we act together and, and live together as friends was uh, a fantastic bonding experience for all of us.